this kind of leads into my, my, the last client I wanted to talk about. Um, this girl is, I, I just got to mention her because she's such a trooper. She came to me at 21 years old, uh, 21, 22, and had severe uh, IBD. Doctors were talking about doing surgery on her. She was out of college, living at home, chronic bleeding and signs of rheumatoid arthritis, chronic uh, inflammation and pain in her hips and joints. We've been working together for about five months. And she was basically symptom free for four of those months. I mean, within the first month, we put her on antimicrobial, a strong probiotic regimen, a, you know, a strong uh, supplement um, additive. And she just did so well with it, very consistent. So she went into the doctor and uh, the doctor uh, said, well, let's take a look. Blood work looks good. Uh, you know, still some iron issues, still calprotectin inflammation, which I'd love to hear about your thoughts on calprotectin. But um, she gets a sigmoidoscopy and they said, well, go in. Everything's actually looking great. You got a great, huge reduction in, in symptoms. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. High fives all around. But all of a sudden, a few days later, she starts getting blood in the stool. And now she's had chronic on and off blood in the stool for the last three weeks since the colonoscopy. And I, I just wanted to get your thoughts, because I've talked to a lot of my clients when they're healing. They said, okay, I'm going to get the colonoscopy now because I really want that check mark. <laughs> and, and I'm like, listen, you know, look at what a colonoscopy is. Understand that that it can actually increase your risk of colon cancer, understand that it can increase your risk of having an inflammatory response and that they can't properly um, clean these things that they're using sometimes up to 60 times a day on different clients yeah. or different people coming in. So we'd love to get your ideas on, you know, one, what could someone like that do who's doing so well now getting the blood is using fissure heal, but is not, that doesn't seem to be helping as much. She's going to have to go back to the beginning and start all over again. Uh, you know, like when she came to you, yep. she's there or worse yeah. because that's what a colonoscopy does. And mm. it's, they are, you know, I mean, I, I came up with that, my report on the dangers of colonoscopy. I don't know how many years ago, maybe 10 or 15. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the last five years, there's also some other doctors on the internet who went, wait a minute, and come up with exactly the same, like, and people going, oh, well, this was so long ago, things, are, no, nothing's changed. You still cannot, because the fiber optic camera is mm -hmm. so delicate that mm -hmm. anything that could kill the pathogens is going to damage the camera, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to, you can't put a corrosive acid on a camera lens. Your lens will be pocked and pitted and you won't be able to see anything. Mm. So th this just until they develop, the only way you're going to know that a colonoscopy is not going to carry a risk of infection is if they have a disposable sheath that covers the entire tube. A condom. A condom for the colonoscopy. Exactly. And they have those for sigmoidoscopies. Mm -hmm. And they also have disposable sigmoidoscopies now. So mm. unless you've got a sheath or a disposable colonoscope, mm -hmm. forget it. I would not, there's no way. And then, you know, the doctors, when they're using it, if they hit an area of scar tissue or, or narrowing, they take that tube and they just, they start ramming it. They're like, I remember that from when I, I've had one colonoscopy in my entire life <laughs> when <laughs> I was first diagnosed and um, <clears throat> I've never had another one. Wow. I think, I think they're like the worst thing that you can do this is my husband. I'm like, go away. I'm on a call. Uh, <laughs> they're the worst thing that you can do uh, to destroy your gut. Yeah. So you've just spent like months or years healing yourself. And because like you said, you want the tick box. You want somebody else. You're still looking to give your authority and your power over your body away to somebody else to mm -hmm. say, oh, you're symptom free. You're healed. There's no markers of Crohn's except tomorrow there will be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right back where you started. Well, for people out there listening, because I mean, every single client I work with is always talking about going to get that colonoscopy for that check mark. What are, you know, some of the, the big dangers of colonoscopy? So we, there's a huge risk of infection. We know that um, it, it, it kills the beneficial bacteria yeah. within your, your gut. Um, it can set off the immune system, especially when they're taking samples, which is creating an open wound. Yes. Um, and and are there is there anything else you uh, you think that's notable or um, its effect on risk of, of colon cancer? Well, our colon cancer, 
No, I think you think you've covered it, right? Like the infective component, the damage to the intestinal walls, and most, most importantly, is the wiping out of that good gut flora. Like if yeah. you have IBD, it takes a minimum of six months to two years to yeah. actually switch that intestinal flora to be robustly beneficial. Yeah. And so then you're going to go in one procedure and just put yourself back to zero again. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at a minimum of six months of high dose oral and rectal to mm -hmm. get like, why, why, why would you do that to yourself? So if you have a strong body wisdom, ask your body for a dream. I always ask for additional points of guidance or something like that. If mm -hmm. all of those things are telling you to get a colonoscopy, fine, go get a colonoscopy. But again, in my colonoscopy dangers book or someone like you, there's a mm -hmm. protocol to follow before colonoscopy and immediately after to minimize all those points of damage and to help the body you know, sustain the procedure and recover from it as quickly as possible. So there is things you can do before and after. And if that's your guidance or your gut or you receive a dream or, you know, look for, look for places of wisdom that you can access that doesn't come from fear. Mm -hmm. if, if those places are telling you to have a colonoscopy, then go and have one. You know, the body, the body knows, right? The body knows what it needs. But just to have it as a check, like just do, just do a stool count, do an ultrasound, do like, there's so many non-invasive, you know, you can get your little boxes ticked on all of those mm. without risking your entire health. And then I would go, and then if you still want to risk your entire health, then you know what that tells me? That tells me that you're healing the physical, but you have not healed the spiritual, emotional roots of your dis-ease which is why you're wanting to recreate them. Mm. You're wanting, there's something in your mind, your energy field that's wanting to put you right back in there mm. when you've just done all this work and you've come so far and you've done, why is that not enough for you? Why do you need to go back to zero again? Right, mm. that's a saboteur, right? And you see this across, this is not just health. I see this in business because I've been working with people, you know, to develop my business program and I worked with people one-on-one. -on -one. I worked with 10 testers one-on-one -on -one. and I saw there's a certain percentage of people, you can take them, you can give them all the know-how, you can take them to where they've launched their business. They're generating great cash flow, and they will just, boom, they'll tank that business. They'll let their website expire. They'll lose everything. They'll just, it's, it's unbelievable to me. And so then we're back to the emotional, psychological, spiritual blocks and saboteurs that we use to blow up our lives mm. in whichever form or relationship, right? You, I'm sure you've seen people do this in relationship whenever they get with someone who's healthy, right? Yeah. Or they have an opportunity to have a healthy relationship. They just blow it up. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of emotional and I know that uh, um, EFT is uh, something you like to do to help people with those emotional. So um, that can be checked out. And um, so, you know, the, the colonoscopy, I mean, one thing I think that helped me, I got two or three colonoscopies myself. Um, I got a sigmoidoscopy the second time and I did see um, an issue with right afterwards, but doing a ret a probiotic retention enema was very yes. helpful doing yeah. large doses of antimicrobial in case there was something that got in there was very helpful. More meditation, more sun, uh, sun high doses of vitamin D, I think really helped yeah. me. 